Good afternoon, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times, Friday, April 15th. Well, the news today is no news. We're going to have to wait until Monday to see if Governor Asa Hutchinson scheme to find a procedural maneuver that can get the Medicaid expansion bill passed despite the opposition of 10 senators uh, will work. As I mentioned yesterday, the plan is this, to uh, have the bill fail, to have the bill amended to say that Arkansas works or the Medicaid expansion is dead, and then have that bill pass. The 10 senators who are against Obamacare will uh, vote for it since it kills Obamacare. It'll go uh, to the governor who will line item veto the part of the bill killing Obamacare, and then it will take effect. Uh, Democrats yesterday weren't ready to go along with moving this quickly out of joint budget. They were not really consulted about this scheme. They were brought into it late. They're just sort of the chopped liver of the Arkansas legislature, expected to go along with whatever the governor wants if it happens to coincide with their beliefs. They want a little more time to study it. I expect they'll come along. Uh, an interested observer in this sent me some past Attorney General's opinions on this question today that raises the question it's not a solid uh, precedent against it, but that says a line item veto perhaps cannot be used for this purpose. That's, that's yet another question to be raised. But anyway, there's going to be a lot of lobbying over the weekend, particularly to see if those 10 Republicans who say they hate Obamacare really will go along with a deal that they know spells that it will continue on in Arkansas at a pretty significant cost and help to the state and people, by the way. Interesting <clears throat> order filed yesterday in Fort Smith by Judge P.K. Holmes. He's going to have a hearing June 10th for 16 class action lawyers and hear their varying stories on how it came to be that a big class action case against an insurance company over underpayment of damages on car claims <coughs> excuse me, wound up being settled, taken out of his court and settled in a state court in Polk, Polk County. He said he's decided that bad things were done, just how bad he'll decide at that hearing. Some of the punishment he may mete out to lawyers could really harm them in their business, and so this is a big deal. The interesting thing that came out yesterday, thanks to the judge putting on the record a previously secret letter, is that just as critics of this class action suit has said, this looks like something that's not benefiting the people that were hurt. Some 15,000 people have potential claims against for underpayments against this insurance company. Since the settlement was approved last year, only 650 people, less than 5%, have filed for claims. That's what critics said, that this was a settlement that would help the lawyers with $1.8 million in fees, but not help the people who were harmed very much. More to come on that. Yesterday was a deadline for comment on the state's plan to continue a general permitting practice for big factory farm operations for hogs. Uh, that is, these control feeding places that put out a tremendous amount of waste, and this is became a big issue because the state allowed one to be built in the Buffalo River watershed. The Sierra Club, the Arkansas Environmental Alliance, and others have said there ought to be a specific permit process that each farm should be evaluated on its own to take into account, for example, underground architecture that, that might promote pollution of rivers, which they think is the case up near the Buffalo River hog farm. The Sierra Club thinks there should be a 30-day delay and let more comments be heard because this has largely gone under the radar. This is going to be a big test for Governor Hutchinson's Environmental Quality Department on whether it sides with the farming industry, industry which wasn't, doesn't want close looks at its, its farming operations, or environmentalists who'd like to protect the Buffalo River. One little wrinkle of a fight turned up at the legislature yesterday. Joyce Elliott, the senator from Little Rock, put a stop to the budget for the Arkansas Department of Heritage. She's not happy that the department seems to have dropped a plan to buy a historic building next door to the state's Mosaic Templars Cultural Center, which is the Museum of the Black Experience in Arkansas. It's a, it's a building that was built by the, the black fraternal organization on whom the, the main museum's existence is based. The state doesn't think it can afford it now. She wants to know why. She thinks the building should be saved. The Arkansas school report cards came out today. Every school in Arkansas gets a letter grade under this. <coughs> The link to find those scores are online on the Arkansas blog. Interesting fact that there was tremendous improvement at a number of schools in Little Rock, including most of those uh, that were the reason the state took over the school district. And these improvements were noted in a year when the old school board was still running the school district. It's interesting today that the Arkansas Democrat Gazette quoted Education Commissioner Johnny Key in, in responding to concerns about a charter school that continues to be approved despite failing scores that perhaps we ought to consider the fact that that school has an inordinate number of poor children, that they are making some progress, even if not meeting the, meeting the proficiency standard. These, of course, are exactly the same arguments that were used to defend some of the schools in Little Rock District that have had a hard time. That was discarded for them, but when it's a charter school, it seems to be something different. 
Taxes are due this weekend, I think, by Monday. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> And what would it be a day without Jason Rayford? Yesterday, the senator from Conway said that he's not sure after all that he's going to vote for the Medicaid expansion or Obamacare because he's learned that uh, the uh, Medicaid program pays for the morning after pill. That is a pill that women may take within 72 hours after sexual intercourse, sometimes in cases of rape to prevent a fertilized egg from implanting in the uterus. Even the right to life people don't call this abortion. Jason Rayford calls this baby killing, if you can believe it. A pill given immediately after sex uh, to a rape victim is baby killing. Well, there you go. That's Jason Rayford. And finally, for those of you who watch this in high definition and notice these kind of things, that's green uh, shrimp curry from the Thai restaurant in Little Rock on my shirt today. It was pretty good. I, I can recommend it. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back next week. You feel it in your heart. The spirit of Little Rock. We've had that spirit since 1927, helping build our city by producing decades of leaders in the heart of our state. We are the heart of business and innovation, the heart of politics and government, the heart of arts and culture, and in our city beats the heart of a Trojan. UALR, we are Little Rock's team and Little Rock's university.